Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about Park India, Kripta, uh, Upper Corridor. And the talks were going on and there was a lot of success achieved during those talks and uh, most likely we'll be starting soon. And then we'll be also talking about Modi's policy towards Pakistan despite the kind of efforts of peace made by uh, Pakistan in this regard. And then the, we'll be also talking about uh, Prime Minister's uh, peace initiative, and especially when he allowed this Qatar uh, area and this whole uh, corridor to open. And uh, definitely, last but not the least, a quick uh, chat regarding Prime Minister Imran Khan's visit to the United States of America. We'll be meeting uh, the US President Donald Trump on the 22nd of this month. So, we'll be talking about that. Let me introduce you to our panelists in the studio. We have with us on my uh, right is Dr. Asma Shakir Khwaja Saiba. She is a foreign affairs expert. Thank you very much, Pam. And we have with us Tariq Priza Saab. He's a senior analyst. Thank you very much, Tariq Saab. And Thank we you. also have with us Air Vice Marshal Retired Ikram Ullah Bhatti Saab, who's a senior defense analyst. Thank you very much, sir, for taking out your time and being a part of the show. Ma'am, uh, to start off from you, first of all, always something which has been always appreciated uh, was this peace initiative by the government of Pakistan, especially by the Prime Minister uh, Imran Khan Saab. Uh, regarding this Kartarpur corridor. I think six wherever, whether in India, Canada, US, England, anywhere present on this globe, they all appreciated it. Now, ma'am, there were these talks and the talks um, are um, pretty fruitful, I would say. Things are moving in the right direction. But your take, ma'am, still, let's, if you do sort analysis of this, it has been criticized in India uh, by a, a majority, I would say, and then regarding that famous hug by the Chief of Army Staff with Navjot Singh Sidhu, who is a very, uh, I think, a very nice person and is somebody who is loved as a cricketer also, all over the world. And then the controversy started, but at least our initiative was there. We stood all along and we delivered. Your take, ma'am. Yeah, what happens that when there is animosity and mistrust, the gap is quite widened. So governments need to fill that gap through different measures, through different initiatives, and through different gestures even, as you yourself said, that the famous hug of Chief of Army Staff, uh, Mr. General Bajwa, to Navjit Sidhu. So all those things culminate in, can culminate into positive outcomes. Mm -hmm. So if we see Kartarpur Saab corridor issue, that definitely it has a religious connotation, a, 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 and a minority in India and Pakistan, is deeply, uh, intentionally associated with Kartarpur Saab corridor, and they want uh, their dream to be materialized. That because of the color of their passport, their access to their most sacred religious place should not be denied, and uh, we should appreciate Pakistan's efforts and gestures. That Pakistan um, always, uh, Pakistan helped or uh, and facilitated. Uh, the Sikh religious community and they, they, they have access to most of their religious places till to date. Yeah. But the, the, the uniqueness of Kartarpur Saab corridor is that Sikhs, they don't need visa. They will get visa free entry uh, to, through a corridor to their most sacred religious places. It means, what does it mean? It means we are simplifying their access to their religious places and we are not possessing it as, as, as our commodity. So, uh, and this would, if the, is, this is facilitating a, uh, a minority, it should be appreciated because it is not harmful for anyone. It is not denying the right of any other ethnic or religious community. I'll just give you an example, ma'am. Uh, there's a Sikh family. Uh, I know they live in Delhi. And, uh, so, there was this program. Uh, I think some private channel, in fact, did a, did a documentary and did a very nice show on that. So there was this link and I just forwarded that link to them. And they said they were so happy and excited to see because they have, they've never seen it this way, the way yes. it was shown on TV. Exactly. So this is the kind of it's, attitude which exactly, a normal person has exactly. about this. And this is the only such religious corridor in the world. In the whole world, there is no single example mm -hmm. that a country, especially those countries, with visa regimes and troubled past and history. They opened, they, they uh, demonstrated such immense respect for a specific religious community. Correct. 
but the problem with the, the Kartarpur Sahab corridor on India's part was that India again uh, tried to gain political mileage out of this, uh, this initiative. They, they thought it is, it can be, op the, like, as if Sikh is, like majority of Sikhs, they live in India. So Sikh is not their religious minority, but it is th their sentiments, their emotional attachment, their religious obligations Absolutely. are the problem of Pakistan, which right. are, it is not. Which is it not is correct, only, absolutely, but this is see, the way when you want to trust, they make people look, yeah. think about it. Yes. And one, when you want to bridge trust gap, what you do, you show respect for uh, the other parties, uh, ideology, mm -hmm. sentiments, religion, all those things. So opening or Pakistan's initiative to open Kartarpur Sahab corridor is only a gesture to show respect right. towards an ethnic community Absolutely. and this may open, mm -hmm. this may lead opening up of other religious corridors, why not? So if this is we, uh, the yeah. right but, of but, any individual. Yeah. But it depends if we want to get out of that troubled past and history. If India wants to, as you earlier mentioned, to, the trust deficit it yes. needs to go. That if, gap needs if to be filled. BJP and Modi, they want to get rid of their political mileage and uh, take uh, take uh, I would say challenging decisions while compromising their political capital or political vote bank which they have established on the hatred and mistrust towards and anti pakistan sentiments basically anti -Pakistan. Yeah. so this yeah, depends yeah. how they how no. they they perceive all right now now no, no, uh, one important area and that is about um, the trust deficit obviously pakistan has tried uh, its best basically to 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 fill in the gap if there was any and there there was obviously or, or to bring the two countries close or Whenever we talk about people-to-people -people contact, unfortunately, something happens and the blame is on Pakistan. And then one step forward and six steps back, right? So this yeah. is the, the unfortunate part. Now, sir, in this case, now Modi has won the election with a huge margin. He's in the government. He's in the power. Do you think now Modi can, because Imran Khan Saab always thought that if Modi comes back to power, the way forward would be much easier, sir. Your take on that point, sir. Now he's in power, do you think he has a different agenda to follow in his second term or he is going to be exactly the same Modi which we witnessed over the last four or five years, sir? Well, let me just uh, compare this development with the development that took place about a few decades ago when the Indus Water Treaty was signed. As a matter of fact, not many people are dis uh, dis uh, you know, referring to that uh, development. That was the first development that uh, took uh, that seized upon the opportunity of uh, creating uh, at least a sense of solution to the extent of the dist distribution of water between the two hostile states. And that was an international treaty. Again, this is not a tripartite treaty that we are, uh, or the fact that we are, uh, agreement that we, are, we have signed or we are about to sign with India on Kartarpur, but uh, providing access to a major religious, uh, a nation within India to a sacred place located in Pakistan. It is a really an amazing development from the perspective of uh, comparing it with the Indus uh, Water Treaty. So that, that is really, it. in that case, we didn't have any politics involved. In this case, Everything is involved, still it is happening. So I think I would give a lot of credit. A lot of people just uh, you know, shy away from giving credit. I do give credit to Imran Khan and his government for coming up with, with this very serious initiative. I mean, I must commend him. And I think uh, people must uh, look at him as someone who has done something very different in the field of diplomacy, in the field of taking the situation to the point of resolution within the two, uh, between the two countries who are, whose history is marred by the issue, issue of bloodshed, wars, and everything. And rightly so. On one point, I do agree with Imran Khan mm -hmm. that the core issue remains. That is the issue of Jammu and Kashmir. So that should never be forgotten. But this development uh, did two, three things. Let me make it very short. It gave access to a nation living within India and brought it closer to Pakistan. That is the political consequence of it. Then it satisfied- to Pakistan. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, I mean, you know, brought closer to Pakistan, to the whole Sikh community. So this whole history 
uh, that we had after the death of Aurangzeb, uh, you know, in which uh, the rule in Punjab and all the, that acrimony that had developed over a period of century and a half between the Muslim community and the Sikhs, that has been taken care of pretty much and through this uh, development. This is also a good historical reference, by the way. Uh, so uh, I, I would say that uh, Imran and his government is doing the best that they can. India has lost a big, uh, the, you know, uh, let me, I don't want to insult the Indian government, but they just, they could have done it in a much better way without creating a lot of fuss about it. And that would not have created an impression that they lost a diplomatic battle against Pakistan. But I think in this case, we pretty much carried the day. All right. Evim Bhatti Saab, your take, sir. Well, you see, uh, the main issue between the two countries has been Kashmir. And uh, the Indian state, uh, as a matter of strategy and policy, decided to uh, use extreme force to crush the freedom struggle of the Kashmiris and they let loose their armed forces with special powers. And now, uh, in order to uh, stop or prevent or preempt any international criticism, they started to blame Pakistan. And with their own uh, Hindutva and their own political strategy of uh, gaining political sympathy or political support within India, they went on a uh, spree on, uh, on an anti-Pakistan, anti-Muslim, anti-minority spree. And uh, with that, they uh, created a situation where, of course, they had to be anti-Pakistan all along. And Pakistan, as our view would recall for the last several years, has been attempting uh, to, to sit down with India, have a dialogue and uh, uh, solve our differences. But Indians have been historically refusing any such attempt or, or uh, denying any such in initiative or invitation from Pakistan. I think uh, Pakistan found an out-of-box solution whereby the Indians had to grudgingly agree to, to such a proposal which they just could not avoid to, to accept. Now, six, as, as a minority, as a community, as a soft underbelly of uh, India, especially after Operation Blue Star and Amritsar, and uh, it was not obligatory on Pakistan to provide this corridor and make uh, and facilitate uh, the pilgrimage of the Sikhs to uh, uh, our part of the country. But the fact remains that we have uh, a significant number of Sikhs living in Pakistan, especially in NW or KPK and elsewhere. We, they, they are now even in our armed forces. So, uh, and uh, we also know that uh, the largest uh, strength of, of the population of Sikhs are in India. And they, they do uh, look at Pakistan uh, favorably. And uh, when Pakistan offered this proposal to, to the Indians, uh, uh, they, they first of all tried to trivialize it by making a statement that uh, it this proposal already existed and India in fact had proposed it 20 exactly, years ago yeah, and you know mm -hmm. and, and Pakistan did not accept and now if, if they are offering it it's no big deal or something uh, but the fact remains that we made a very serious offer then that uh, you know famous embrace by the chief of army staff with Sidhu and uh, the, the six were overwhelmed by this proposal and the Indians had just no and choice but, but hailed to accept the it. Of Pakistan, sir, whether those six were in Canada, USA, yes. UK, they, everywhere. They had no choice but to accept it. Yes. Of course, they dragged their feet, they dilly dallied, but ultimately, uh, this was a proposal which had to be accepted, uh, accepted, and or which had to be moved on. And uh, the Indian government ultimately accepted it. And uh, though uh, slowly, uh, but they moved, and finally, we see that it is now happening. The Indians are now negotiating. Uh, around 70% of the work is now done. The agreements uh, are, uh, you know, resolved, settled, and hopefully, uh, the opening ceremony will take place around November, uh, coinciding with the 550th anniversary. And I'm sure it's going to uh, uh, create a new uh, level of confidence, trust, 
uh, between the two countries. While uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, especially the Prime Minister, was hopeful that after winning the elections, uh, Modi's stance towards Pakistan would change. But it appears that he has gone so far ahead. He invested so much of political capital in anti-Pakistan rhetoric and uh, flaming those sentiments in, in India uh, against the Muslims, against the minorities, that it is now difficult for him to step back. That is what is visible, unless the world opinion does pressurize him and he But it's about what difference will it make? Don't you think that is going to be appreciated by the people of India also, sir? I mean, there is an extremist element, yes. But, sir, I'm talking about the majority. Majority is not. Majority of Pakistanis are not extremists. I mean, if there is 0.01%, you can't say that, you know, everybody is like that. Unfortunately, that is what is presented on, on, on the mega screens of huge uh, TV channels, and you know. So the image yeah. of Pakistan is... But the thing is that in Pakistan, those extremists cannot win the elections. In India, they did. And they have. Yeah. So this is this is what refers to no, political capital, point, yeah. mm -hmm. because in Pakistan they don't have popular uh, public sentiments with them, or they they cannot win popular general elections. But as as your question is concerned, when it comes to Modi, if we see his personality, the way he uh, he governed Gujarat and India, I can see that he has this. Uh, this desire to be more popular and have his name in the history of subcontinent or the world. And he has this uh, bit of, I, I would say, irrationality to take challenging decisions. Like, uh, for example, uh, the uh, what he did in Gujarat vis-a-vis uh, -vis Muslims. No, I, I don't think so. No sane politician can think about it. Ma'am, if I may ask you a straight question. Hmm. So that means that as long as Narendra Modi is in power, hmm. as long as he is the Prime Minister of India, hmm. so-called the largest democracy in the world, that means that there should be no peace, all right? No, no. See, uh, he is the same Narendra no Modi who came to Pakistan to attend the uh, wedding of the granddaughter of a politician. We should not forget because then it means that he has this urge to take such decisions. Wasn't that on, on a personal level, ma'am? Even on personal level, when one needs a uh, lot of, lots of courage, to take such steps, even on personal level. So I can see that if confidence building measures between Pakistan and India, like ongoing track to uh, dialogue in New Delhi, the this Kartarpur negotiations, maybe they will be helpful. And uh, because it has, as, as my colleague said, that it has international acknowledgement. Whole world is praising Pakistan for taking such measures. Whole world praised Pakistan for returning Abhinandan as well after the Balakot. So maybe this praise and this appreciation would pa for Pakistan would motivate uh, or inspire Modi to take the lead when it comes to sustainable peace in South Asia. But this can be my optimism or my uh, speculations. But if we see current Modi's, pol Modi's, Modi's current policy toward Pakistan, it is the policy of stalemate. It is the policy of preservation of status quo because this stalemate and status quo is favoring their political rhetoric. And that, how, how, how yeah. is that? Ma because they are still talking about uh, abrogating the, th the Article 370 from the Indian Constitution, Kashmir issue. Mm -hmm. um, they are still uh, 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 talking about not starting composite or comprehensive dialogue with Pakistan. They still missed the opportunity to meet um, our Prime Minister, Mr. Imran Khan, at international at the sidelines of, of international SEO. forum at mm -hmm. SCO, mm -hmm. which, if they would have a political will to do that, they would uh, they they should capitalize on that, on, on those opportunities. But they did not didn't. So maybe we can hope. Maybe um, they are also looking for a face saving because for political, domestic vote bank and uh, electoral politics, they really hyped the anti-Pakistan sentiments or hatred for Pakistan. So now they need a face saving to revert back to that uh, from that stance. And maybe Kartarpur or other uh, important dialogues mm -hmm. would provide that face saving to the Indian government so that they can talk about peace because, and then if we see the historical trends in between India and Pakistan, yeah. whenever uh, our relations touch the lowest ebb, whenever the ball hit the ground, it has to come up. So this is the law of nature. Whenever the ball hits the I ground, I mean, post 27th February incident, ma'am, 
I mean, you can I won't, see. I won't, I won't say that the two countries have normal relations. Forget about normal. I mean, they still are very intense. Yeah, but we start, we have started to think about normal relations. As I always say, I, I said it in your program as well, that com establishing or using communication links is really, really important, whether it is an official meeting for Kartarpur Sahab Corridor or it is a track to going on. Ma'am, it was Dr. Faisal, who is the DG of South Asia, who headed it from the Pakistani side. Mm -hmm. And it was a joint secretary mm -hmm. who was leading the uh, delegation from the Indian side. So mm -hmm. that was at, at a very lower level. Uh, you are not even secretary level. And, and then he was about from the Ministry of Interior. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. interior, so this, this, not the this, external this, affairs. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So this, this is, yeah. the, we can, give, and right, like they refused to, for this uh, sapling of neem uh, tree. So, uh, these are only symbolic yeah. measures, but they are trying to refrain from any even symbolic act which can lead or which can, um, which can show the desire for peace from India. Mm -hmm. All right, N all right, all right. All right. Yeah. Now, 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 sir, first of all, because you know when Mambo was, uh, answering uh, you knowing and you know on certain accounts you ha had some different opinion i guess so yeah let's start off from yeah. there. yeah so. well uh, you know these are great points that are being made but these are the a uh, couple of realities realities are these are two hostile states enemy states you know those who work on indian television they know by dealing with their intelligentsia yeah, by dealing with the diplomats by dealing with their anchors and with their reporters and everybody, uh, religious um, uh, segment, that there is no love lost for Pakistan. Actually, there is every bit of hostility that is demonstrated when you appear on those shows and partake over uh, in their programs. So, so this whole notion that there is any sense of goodwill that will be coming, uh, emerging as a result of Kartarpur, I clearly earmarked uh, the very fact that it, the whole issue deals with the Sikh community. And this is to our advantage that we have a favorable, a, a community favorably looking and thinking positively, uh, positively are, of are, the relations the with sub. Pakistan. This is in our interest. All right. And this is one reason they hated this development when it started, but they could not, as it has been said, they could not, uh, you know, avoid the uh, a reality, historical reality, that it, it is going to happen, that it cannot be avoided, that if they stick to their policy of refusing to sign this agreement, that they would lose a major nation living with India uh, turning against the center. Please, Rasa, the, the Sikh community, what sort of, I would say, decision-making power the Sikh community has in the corridors of power in India, sir? Especially Actually, the they have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I would not say it would happen exactly the way we might think, but they are a major power within the armed forces of India, number one. They, the Punjab, which is the uh, you know, largest uh, grain producer in, in, subcontinent, uh, in, in India. Food uh, they, they, actually, they, in they are the custodians of uh, food, uh, food products, actually, if I can put it this way, food supply, food chain. Uh, as, uh, thirdly, uh, they they are living right along with Pakistan, and their and their valiance and uh, bravery, uh, you know, is, is an asset to the Indian uh, Indian defense uh, forces. So it is not easy uh, that uh, they can allow any development to damage the Indian interest uh, by if we really annoy them. The, that is, if the Indian center or federation annoys them in one or the other way. So that is very important. Secondly. Imran Khan has a good desire to develop relations with India. But the reality is that whether, be it Modi or be it Jawaharlal Nehru, the policy remains on Kashmir very much the same. Nothing changes. So the third thing that has to change is, that is the policy within Pakistan. That mm -hmm. just the diplomatic moral uh, you know, um, endeavor is not enough. We have to do, without going into the details, people from military and civil uh, and uh, s s s civil community are uh, here. They know how things can be managed, you know, through various means and tools to influence India. The liberation movement in Kashmir, that has to be supported. If we don't support it, the issue of Kashmir cannot become a larger 
international issue one again, once again because the Indian economic and political status is slowly dominating uh, everything else that was once very That's important. That's a reality, sir. So what I'm saying is... Did we, they claim we, that we, they will be the next, I mean, third... Or, or whatever. Yeah. Biggest economy so in making, five years. Ma making, 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 making it very simple, since the, uh, this is the, actually the liberation movement that is going on right now, freedom struggle, that has pushed it uh, to the surface again. Had it not been there, by, that by this time, the dust of time would have taken to a very dangerous level on this issue. And this will be, start developing one more time. Because if we don't, don't support the freedom struggle through various means, other than the uh, diplomatic means, and a lot of people hate to agree with me, but this is the reality. If you have an ideology of Pakistan, if you think it is a part of an unfinished agenda of the creation of India and Pakistan, if you think that uh, 10 million Kashmiris are Muslims and the geography is ours, and that the, uh, the way Pakistan and India were created, that principle is still valid. If we believe in that, you have to work on this issue. We if believe you, in that, if but you they don't, don't. That's the problem. No, that's what I'm saying. So you have to develop ways and the kind from of, international kind of diplomacy. Economic and, and yeah, from international diplomacy to semi-military diplomacy to various other tools. Engagement at all the levels, basically. And that's what and you're saying. And put pressure on India. Because we are the only one who can do that. We, they, look, Palestinians have nobody behind them other than the diplomatic support of the world. Look what is happening. This election that is happening in India or in Israel, they are talking about absorbing the whole of the West Bank into uh, uh, the current Israel. And this is exactly uh, the situation that might arise in Kashmir in the days ahead. As uh, uh, my, my colleague just mentioned, uh, it is not just one clause of the Constitution. We are talking about simply changing the status of Kashmir Modi has the support of the majority of the radical people who voted for him. And those who were not even uh, radical, at least they were swayed by the fact that there was an anti-Pakistan element that was sold and very successfully. In India, in no, politics. this is much greater a reality in India at a very intense fundamental level. All right. Uh, even so, whenever we talk about this comprehensive dialogue or a meaningful dialogue or whatever name or adjective you can add, but, sir, at the end of the day, whenever we want to start off negotiations, I mean, Kashmir, we keep it at the top. Terrorism, they keep it, number one. And unfortunately, since the whole world is talking about terrorism, so that becomes a hard selling cake, sir. And this is what has been happening. And they are blaming Pakistan for anything that happens in India. But, sir, they do not come to the real core issues, whether you talk about Sir Creek issue, or you talk about, uh, for that matter, Searching. Searchen, or, or otherwise. I mean, now water issue is going to be another problem. So, sir, do you think in the near future the kind of economic strength India is gaining by each passing? That's the reality, sir. The kind of uh, influence they're having uh, over such huge powers like even USA, sir. Do you think, sir, in, in those circumstances, and look at the condition of Pakistan, I don't want to say much about it. Do you think, is there any equilibrium in the equation? Well, you see, uh, our uh, uh, membership in different uh, regional and world bodies is uh, provides, uh, I think, an opportunity uh, uh, to address this issue. For example, in SEO, we have both India and Pakistan, and then we have China, we have Russia. And over there, uh, that's a platform which, which, uh, which provides an opportunity where both China as well as Russia would be seriously interested that these two neighboring countries who are part of SEO ought to settle their differences. And uh, similarly, while the case has been in the UN for such a long time, uh, it is just that, as, as we just mentioned, the, the, uh, the economic uh, potential of uh, uh, India and the uh, other big countries, uh, the, the interest that they have, both political and economic, vis-a-vis -vis India, uh, actually prevents uh, them from uh, referring to or alluding to uh, the atrocities the Indians are committing in Kashmir. Hence, it doesn't find any uh, focus or attention at that level. 
Hence, the Indians are uh, allowed to continue whatever they want to do over there. And uh, you, you would recall until 9-11, the, the uh, Kashmiris struggle uh, to liberate or uh, seek freedom from India was accepted to the rest of the world. And all the Kashmiris who were engaged in this were named as or termed as freedom fighters. But overnight after 9-11, they got labeled as terrorists. And unfortunately, Pakistan could not defend their case against the world. And on the contrary, we, we got labeled as, and which was also internationally accepted, uh, that Pakistan is a country that uh, is exporting terrorism. And it yes. took us a very long time to convince the world that, look, we are in fact victims of terrorism. We are it not was the other way around, actually. Yes. And that is actually what has been tying our hands and we have not been able to, uh, you know, get rid of it or wriggle out of it. And hence, we, we, we could not provide uh, uh, the true support to the Kashmiri cause and uh, which would have added, uh, you know, strength. Uh, in our efforts in uh, drawing the attention of the world toward this uh, problem and ultimately reach a solution. And I, in, in my view, hopefully as and when a solution does get reached between India and Pakistan over Kashmir, it will be through an international intervention. Between the two of us, we have seen that we have been struggling for such a long time, uh, we have not been able to sit on a table and discuss it. And I think... Uh, as I said, in my the view, probability S of that discussion is S zero. In fact, SEO is, in my view, SEO is one organization, what one platform where I think there is potential because, uh, if at all, th there is a uh, serious conflict which uh, uh, degenerates into a nuclear exchange, then uh, Russia and China are the two re uh, big regional powers who would be affected the most, other than India and Pakistan. And that is why I think they will be the, the two entities who will be interested the most that that thing doesn't happen between these two countries. And Kashmir always being a, you know, a, 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 a situation where any conflict between the two countries could take place and degenerate. Hence, I think that is a platform where uh, these countries sit together, both India and Pakistan, along with the, these two big regional powers. And I think... Uh, while we have seen uh, UNO, they have not been able to provide any solution, any support, any help. We shouldn't expect something from them either. Yes. Now, uh, last quick comment, ma'am. That is about uh, the visit of the Prime Minister to USA. First engagement like between the... I would like to comment quick on comment. the economic quick. potential of India. Yes. My question is that can you compare the economic potential of Afghanistan and Soviet Union, though Pakistan is not Afghanistan, but primarily economic potential can be assessed vis-a-vis -vis the strategic and uh, strategic objectives or designs of a country. So if India, India's strategic designs are over ambitions and are not compatible with their economic potential, I don't see, I don't, uh, I, I, I can't see but that. But still we India is accepted it. As, as an economic yeah, power, but we have to as see a that giant, I mean, reality yeah, is a reality. Yeah, so Pakistan's economic potential, uh, we, we need, uh, definitely we need to work on an economy. But even contem contemporary current uh, economic potential is c compatible with our strategic uh, designs or objectives. Though we need to work on that, though we need to improve it. We, we need that's to do, debatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's but, debatable. But, uh, so your qu question was... Ma'am, that uh, was about this yeah. visit of uh, the Prime Minister to the United yeah. States of America, where on the 22nd of July, hmm. he'll be meeting none other than the president of USA, Donald Trump. Yeah. And interestingly, there was this very interesting analysis in one of their talk shows about the two. And they said, well, there's a lot in common. So let's start off from there, ma'am. Do you think this could be the moment when we can actually, because Imran Khan Saab has always said that we, we enjoy a good relationship with USA. He has never criticized. He, do, uh, he actually he understands the, the importance of USA and their might and their power. Yeah. And so, yeah. But we should not burden or stress this visit with the hype of expectations. One single visit between the uh, meeting between the head of the states cannot do magics or miracles. So always, I always see as a student of media studies that whenever media 
media creates so much hype about a certain issue it pressurizes the the, the even the team or the group or the uh, or the panel and and the desire if the results are not as per the expectation people believe that this uh, meeting is uh, could not bring results or it is a failed attempt but it is not it is a big thing that prime minister uh, of pakistan is meeting a uh, uh, us president and we can hope for the best we can because it is also a symbol of ice breaking between pakistan us relations which were not at their best during last few years so for me it is a sign of even meeting donald trump is a sign of achievement for pakistan because you can see that how uh, trump was uh, or the statements of mr trump about pakistan how they were dealing with pakistan how they cut off the aid and defense cooperation and all those things with pakistan and now uh, meeting pakistani prime minister means that they want to maybe mend their uh, wrong decisions which they took in the past one important area sir, and that was about <clears throat> There was this uh, press conference of the uh, State Department, and they had no clue when the Prime Minister Imran Khan was supposed to meet hmm. uh, the President of. They had no. This particular question was put to them also. And the next day, the White House announced that on the 22nd, the PM of Pakistan is going to meet the President of USA. There seems to be a major disconnect sir what exactly is going on that is there? typical of the of today's white house for <laughs> the last two and a half years there's nothing surprising about but it but sir visit of a head of state and they're also could from you Pakistan. imagine the same pompeo was on a trip to north korea and he was uh, trying to reach some uh, make some progress over there and here is this president donald j trump making a statement simply dismantling the outcome of his uh, trip to north korea yeah. so this is a White House which has which the United States has not seen in the last 200 years. Mm -hmm. This White House is very different. Mr. Trump is the foreign pol uh, is the Secretary of State. He is the president. He is the he is everything. He thinks as long as his name is there on the on the platform he on says the he's table. He the status quo. Uh, that's so does it, Imran that's Khan. It. Okay, he here is the, that, uh, the, you know, because we are, we are short of, of time. Traditional politicians. Because we are short of time, so let me get to a Sakhan. couple of other points. I have said it in dozens of programs. Let me reiterate that it is just a good luck of Pakistan that we have a man like Donald Trump in White House. He is not a warmonger like many other presidents, and I hate to say that because he has all other evils in his personality, you know, combined <laughs> at the present time. I don't want to talk positively about him, but let me say positive th positively one thing about him. He's focused on withdrawal from Afghanistan. He's focused on withdrawal before the expiry of his, uh, before the holding of uh, November elections next year, uh, before the elections uh, take place next year. He wants to sell this issue during his election campaign after the convention in June or July, whenever the yeah. uh, political con uh, mm -hmm. election, uh, electoral conventions take place, the Republican convention takes place. He wants to sell it to his base in this heart of the country. Since I have a lot of uh, you know time that I've spent in the United States, this man is trying to capitalize on this success because that is the only major success he would have if nothing goes wrong with it. And I think Imran is doing two great things at the present time. He is understanding this point. I, I believe he is understanding. Mm -hmm. He's providing maximum support, and it is in the interest of Pakistan to have a peaceful Afghanistan, or at least an Afghanistan without the presence of US forces. Let me call, call uh, say it, both the, make both the points. So. As long as we can facilitate the withdrawal of the for US forces and we can have a, a resulting peace in Afghanistan, it will be in the interest of uh, Donald J. Trump and it will be a, a greatly in the interest of Pakistan to have this development take place right. sooner than later. But I've always said, if this moment is lost before the end of the, before the November elections next year and this man loses the election, uh, that is John, Donald J. Trump, Pakistan will be left with the U.S. that will have some sort of presence for a very long time to come. He is the only man who is withdrawing, was almost withdrawn from Syria. He is, has no interest left in 
uh, you know, Iraq. He, he wants to bring out or, or pull, pull back all those few hundred, you know, U.S. soldiers, the Marines who are there. Uh -huh. So let me say one more time, Imran has a golden time uh, to capitalize on this issue. People, this, let me also say, it will be considered an exaggeration. He is the first sitting prime minister or, uh, or a person in power in Pakistan who has been respectably and honorably invited by the White House. This is very different. We know from various sources, people get uh, their requests sent to White House. They beg, they play the politics, go through the White House, uh, go through the State Department and uh, get the message issued, uh, get, get the invitations is issued. This is not happening this time. Imran has no uh, love loss for this man. But the uh, reality is Trump needs him. And in incidentally, we need Trump to get uh, the issue of Afghanistan resolved. All right. One last thing quickly in one line. As far as the, the military relations between the two countries are concerned, we lost a lot of uh, you know, uh, benefit of military assistance during the uh, Obama administration, especially there were eight F-16s whose case was about, were, was about to be resolved. And somehow the administration and the Congress both came in the way. We lost that uh, development. I think it's time that they go for two squadrons. Uh, and, 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 and if that opportunity is lost, I think I have a feeling that Imran can get it delivered, getting 20, 30, you know, block 50 or 52. It's a golden opportunity. And the spare parts from the United States against the background of Afghanistan and the developments that are taking. I think, I That's think, very important. I, I think this is going to be the major agenda, but it's a couple of important areas also. Pak-U.S. relationship is now always seen through the prism of Afghanistan, like mentioned by our friend Tariq Rizal, Afghanistan. And now I'm sure there's going to be another development that is going to be about Pakistan and India relationships, especially post-27 Feb incident. These two issues, sir, and plus now, to restart or renegotiate the contents of a relationship, sir, your take? Well, you see, uh, it is going to be a very busy uh, meeting because I think the, the, the American president will have a lot to say and I, I think our prime minister will also have a lot to say. And, uh, and we, we've all just discussed the various issues or topics that are going to come up on that table. And. Uh, the, uh, we, we just talked about the similarities between the two personalities. I think that is going to work the magic from both the sides. And uh, I am quite hopeful that uh, something good is going to come out of this. And while we may say that we should not expect miracles, but I think we should definitely expect success. I mean, uh, 23rd uh, July would be a better day for Pakistan and America compared to 22nd July. I mean, this is what I hope. And, uh, of course, uh, Pakistan has uh, done a lot in bringing about uh, this settlement between uh, the Americans and the Taliban, which is yet to conclude, but both the sides agree that uh, uh, they've almost reached 80-90% of agreement, and which essentially has been uh, contributed by Pakistan, and to which the Americans agree to. And uh, they, they are, uh, of course, grateful. And the uh, uh, the naming of uh, BLA as a terrorist entity uh, that that is a very positive. That's a, uh, that's a clear say, yeah. clear acknowledgement. Uh, well, the UK acknowledged it in 2006. The American took it, it. It took 13 years to do that, and they're just waiting for such an opportunity. So we can see that even before the visit, the, the Americans are giving us, you know, very positive indications that they they are looking forward to it, and something is going to happen in this visit. And uh, as I said, there are a lot of things to be talked about and a uh, lot of outstanding issues and from both the sides. And I'm sure there are going to be a lot of uh, issues that will get resolved, a lot of new opportunities will come up. And one important thing, you see, in the, in the last uh, press conference of Mr. Trump regarding India, regarding Pakistan and America relationship, he, he did mention that uh, while, while they're going to discuss uh, uh, and meet, and uh, the, the topic that he included was peace 
in the in the region vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan. So as far as Pakistan and Afghanistan is concerned, I mean the peace is not as important as it is between India and Pakistan. So that is an indication that even Trump is going to allude to this, yeah. discuss this, mm -hmm. which is very important for Pakistan. That if, if the Americans are prepared to intervene and uh, be an interlocutor or uh, or uh, uh, go between, I think it will be a great breakthrough for Pakistan. So I think uh, I am quite hopeful that something good is going to come out of oh, this. Let's, let's hope. Uh, let, let me just quickly say one thing. Uh, I mean, I, I, I tend to a little, little bit disagree with the last point. I don't think uh, that the as far as the uh, U.S.-India uh, relations are concerned, mm -hmm. they have a very separate, uh, you know, there's a spectrum, separate spectrum for that. And uh, the strategic relationship is still there. Mm -hmm. It is very much intact. All right. So probably that might not happen. But on the issue of, of Afghanistan, on the issue of military assistance, on the issue of the uh, frozen, uh, you know, the, the equipment that is there, the helicopters, uh, the uh, the Hellfire missiles and the, and and of course the uh, you know air weapons that I just mentioned uh, a minute ago, Block 50, 52, or other. Uh, it just is. It is quite possible. All right, all right, all right, all right sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Abim. Uh, it was a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. And that's all we have for this hour. I'll see you again. Till then, you take good care. Good afternoon.